Blinding strobe lights. Blue, green, neon yellow, sharp and flashing. You walk down the tunnel, lights growing brighter. What are they chanting? Dax! 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 Boom! An explosion. Fireworks overhead and a burst of pyrotechnics spewing beautiful orange fire all alongside you. The heat incredible. And in perfect synchronicity, the orchestra billows out the classic theme just as you take your first step out of the tunnel, emerging center stage. And peering through the shining lights, you see the thousands of joyful smiles. You take a deep breath, lean into the mic, and say, Hello, and welcome to Smoothie Madness, the hit television game show where each week two teams compete in various smoothie-themed challenges to see who can win up to $10,000 cash prize. I'm your host, Dax Flame, and this is going to be one heck of a show. I visualize this often. I also visualize having a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Visualization is a technique that has worked for me in the past. During the whole process of auditioning for my first feature film role, Project X, I'd look into the mirror before each audition and say, I'm on set of a movie, envisioning myself in front of a Warner Brothers camera, and eventually I was. But visualization alone gets you nowhere. It's the first step, but not the only step. And the next step towards realizing that vision, the vision of me hosting a game show in a huge studio with professional lighting and fireworks and a live audience, all being broadcast on TV, is to find a way to continue funding the current version of my game show, filmed in friends' backyards by anyone who has a camera in the time, socially distanced, broadcast on YouTube. Hello, and welcome to Smoothie Madness, the hit game show where each week two teams compete in various smoothie-themed challenges to see who can win up to $100 cash prize. Smoothie Madness consists of three rounds. The first round is worth $20, the second round is worth $30, and the final round is worth $50. In addition to the cash prizes, I also pay the crew, the contestants, and my team of co-hosts, bringing the total expenses for each episode to about $750. I make an average of about $200 back via YouTube AdSense each time I post, meaning I've got to find a way to make another $550 in revenue per episode. I have a very lucrative idea for a mostly automated smoothie shop that I've been working on, but setting it up will take time, and in the cutthroat world of internet algorithms, time is not something that I have. What I do have is another idea. Take out a loan to start the smoothie shop, use a portion of the loan to fund more episodes of the game show now, then build out the shop using the profits of the game show once it blows up slash once it's on TV. A golden-haired California surfer stood at a crosswalk beneath the flickering Hollywood Boulevard neon, calm and cool with a hint of wonder in his eyes. His well-fitting outfit looked like it had been designed by GQ, a publication I'd soon find out he actually modeled for. His ears were filled with AirPods, yet there was an openness about him, so I approached him the same way I'd approached 50 other strangers that crisp November evening. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I watch YouTube. Uh, do you want to be on a game show? Sure. What kind of game show? It's like a smoothie theme game show. Smoothie theme? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, how does it work? You just compete against someone else. Okay. Okay, yeah, just I'll wait to hear from you. Cool. Thanks, Dad. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Right now, we're going to the ice cream shop. The first ever episode of Smoothie Madness was produced and funded by the popular YouTuber iDubs as part of the ice cream documentary he was making about me at the time. We'd been shooting the documentary for a few days when he asked me if I had any big life goals or pipe dreams outside of my ice cream job. I told him about my game show idea, and he said, That's great. Let's do it. Okay. When? Now. Then we went to Hollywood Boulevard to find contestants, and that's where we met Brett. You want to be on the game show, maybe? Maybe, sure. Okay. We then went to Target uh, to buy more equipment to make the pilot. And then we shot the pilot. Hello, and welcome to Smoothie Madness, the new game show where each week two contestants compete in three smoothie-themed challenges to see who can win up to $100 cash prize. When we finished filming the pilot, did you think that people would connect with it? Absolutely. I thought people were going to connect with Smoothie Madness because the way that you had like pitched it to me, it was like you were already coming from a place of like, like uh, building lessons into it. And then how many months after we finished filming that day, 
between then and when the documentary and pilot got released onto YouTube. Uh, gosh. March, April, May, June, July. Eight months. Uh, when it came out in July, uh-huh. uh, it, how many views did it get? Uh, gosh. I think in the first day, it was definitely over a million. Um, and now I think it's sitting at four or five million. What's your guys' weirdest flavor? Uh, so, you were happy with being in the documentary and ex watching it all come out? Loved it. Cool. Yeah. I've been trying to think of ways to make another episode of Smoothie Madness socially distanced. What if you co-hosted the second episode or something? I'd love that. That could be cool. Yeah, like I could have a different kind of role. Um, you know, and cut to bread for this segment, or I don't know, yeah. something like that, for sure. Hello, I am but a humble college student that loves to treat myself to some watermelon juice once in a while. The Mexican juice from Northgate Market is unmatched, but in all honesty, my favorite juice has got to be tomato juice. Add some pepper and Tabasco for flavor, and that stuff is OP. And best of luck to the show. It sounds absolutely refreshing. This was the best response I received to the Craigslist ad I placed asking if for game show contestants leading up to the filming of the second episode. It had been eight months since we filmed the first episode, and three weeks since it was released alongside the documentary. I soon found two other contestants, and a few days before we were scheduled to shoot, Brett told me about a friend of his named Ian, who could help film the episode for us. So when you filmed episode two, how did you feel that it went? I was excited. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, was it perfect? No. But did we want it to be perfect? I mean, in a pipe dream, yes, but what we had and like who we were working with for the first time, you know, I was so happy with how it turned out. I think yeah, it's, because it's it, it, it doesn't matter if there's a few mistakes, we get better on the next one. Yeah, and like we were all just finding our footing, you know. What is the general takeaway uh, from your ex from the crew's experience with Smoothie Madness? I would say like one sentence, like flying by the seat of our pants for sure. There's definitely like a it's like a lot of momentum. It's all strong, but it feels like very fast and high paced. So that's kind of that's my takeaway for sure. What do you uh, think about Smoothie Madness on TV? Obviously, we would have to add to the production of it, but I think it's a, I think it's great for TV. I think it's what TV needs. Shortly after filming episode 5, I had the idea to start a smoothie shop to keep funding the show. And after episode 6, I was contacted by someone from an audiobook company who implied that they'd like to give me an audiobook deal, which could fund many episodes. Over the course of the next week, I wrote up four chapters and scheduled a call with them, but they didn't follow through with the call or respond to any emails after that, so I decided to turn the four unpublished audiobook chapters into a documentary. Where do you see yourself in five years? Okay, Dad. <laughs> um, five years, man. I want to be touring the world with music, making feature films, and potentially a father and a husband. And as for me, in five years, I see myself owning a mostly automated smoothie shop where I film episodes of my game show for YouTube while also hosting episodes of my game show for television out of a studio.